let's get the forces down in this pulley's question. So P has mass 4 kilograms, so its weight is going to be 4 times G, where G is 9.8, acting down. And I'll put in the weight of Q as well, so that is also acting down, and it's 6, it's, uh, six kilograms, so it's going to be 6G. Okay, so let's think about what stops P from just falling under gravity. It's the string. There's a tension acting up, which ultimately comes from the fact that Q is there. And then for Q, there's also going to be a tension acting up because P is trying to pull it up. And finally, because Q is actually resting on the ground, told this, resting in the plane, there's going to be this additional force, which I'm going to put over here, normal reaction force acting on Q. No normal reaction force on P because it's suspended in the air. Um, this 1.75 meters is there, but in question one, actually, we're not interested in that. We're just trying to find the magnitude of the normal reaction force. We're trying to find R. So it's only one mark. You can do this quite quickly. You can say that, hey, T has to equal 4G because it's an equilibrium. Technically, I'm applying F equals MA to P and doing T minus 4G equals zero because acceleration is zero. So T is equal to 4G. And then I can, I can basically replace it here, 4G acting up. So we can then apply uh, resolve forces or apply F equals MA to Q. Um, and we can see that R is going to have to be 2G because it's going to be 4G plus R um, minus 6G is 0 or 4G plus R is equal to 6G. So R is 2G, which is 2 times 9.8, which is 19.6 newtons. Moving on, we're told that the mass of P is doubled. So in fact, it's going to become 8 kilograms and it's going to cause Q to move up, P to move down. I'm going to get a new diagram for this. So now Q, hold on, let me stick with the same colours. So I was doing it in red, so I've got 6G acting down still, attention acting up. It's going to be different though from before. And on P, it's now 8G and a tension acting up. Note that now when we, um, the, we're going to release the system, and although it's momentarily on the ground, it's about to move up, so there actually won't be a normal reaction force. And yeah, we've got this 1.75 meters in there as well. Okay, determine the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string before P strikes the plane. Okay, I've not incorporated that into the first part of the question. So we need to think about the forces on the pulley. So in blue, the force is on P, and in red, the force is on Q. In fact, due to Newton's third law, there will be an equal and opposite tension pulling down on the pulley. Because essentially, the, you know, um, the, the tension in the string kind of comes through the pulley. So this will be acting down, and there'll be another one acting down here. So in fact, this question is saying, find 2T. Um, so let's look at P. We can write, we know that it's going to be going down, so I'm going to apply F equals MA down. Then 8G minus T will equal 8A. I don't know what A or T are, but I can write down that equation. And I can do similar with Q. I'm going to apply F equals MA up because that's the direction of motion. You could, you could add that on, and acceleration is going to be going up, and on T there's going to be acceleration going down. These, this double arrow means uh, accelerating. So it's going to be T minus 6G is equal to 6A. Okay, brilliant. Now what we can do is we can just add these equations. This is the easiest thing. Like we actually want t, and if we add the equations, we'll eliminate t. But it's just by far the easiest way um, of dealing with this sort of situation. And we may well need um, a later on. We'll find out. So we're going to add these. The the minus t and the t cancel. We're going to be left with 2g on the left hand side and 14a here. Therefore, a is going to be 2g over 14 or g over 7 or 1 7th g. Just leave it like that for the moment. Then if I want t, I can just substitute it back in. t is going to, I can put it back into either one. So it's going to be 6 over 7g because that's 6 times a plus 6g 
And so it's going to be 6 and 6 sevenths g, but let's work that out exactly. So 6 divided by 7 plus 6, I can do that, and then I can times that by 9.8. So 67.2. And therefore 2t, just times it by 2. Hundred and thirty four point four. So I'm going to run that to three significant figures. Just going to say, um, it's going to say what it is force. Exerted on pulley. Five string equals 134 newtons. Nice. Right. Onwards, C says determine the total distance traveled by Q between the instant when the system is released and the instant where Q, when Q first momentarily comes to rest. All right, this is probably, this is the hardest part of this problem, I think, other than like not maybe realizing that you need to find 2T in part B, the process once you realize that is okay. Um, but here, actually, we need to apply SUVAT, but there's going to be two stages. So I'm going to kind of talk through the two stages. Stage one is we've got the system, we've worked out the acceleration, all good. P is going to be moving down and Q is going to be moving up. Now, after P moves down 1.75 meters and Q moves up 1.75 meters, P is going to hit the ground. And that is going to change the dynamics of the system because the tension, the, the string is going to no longer become taut. Um, it's going to be loose. And the Q is basically going to just be in free fall. So P goes down, Q goes up. When P hits the ground, Q is then going to be a free particle. It's going to keep on going up and then it's going to stop at some point. And that's the distance we want to find from the ground to where it stops. Okay, hopefully you're happy with that. So C, let's look at stage one. P in motion. Um, and so I think I'm gonna focus, ooh, what should I do? No, I'll focus on Q. I could focus on Q, P going down and work out um, the final speed of P which is going to be the final speed of Q. They're just going to be in opposite directions, but I suppose it makes sense to just look at Q and that P in motion, Q, um, string torques. Maybe I should just add that. All right, let's take a look at Q and we're going to apply SUVAT and we're going to say that um, up is positive. So u is equal to zero, it's starting at rest. It's gonna move 1.75 meters during this period when P is moving down. And the acceleration, see, it was useful to find it, even though we, you know, we then had to find T afterwards, is gonna be one seventh G. And P is gonna be going down with that acceleration. So the whole reason for me doing this is that I can find the final velocity. I'm not interested in how long it takes. I can find the final velocity and that will actually be the initial velocity in stage two because we've got two stages of SUVAT, like I said. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So it's just going to be zero plus two times one over seven G times 1.75. And we get 4.9. So V is going to be the square root of 4.9, which is going to be not a very nice number. So I'm actually just going to leave it like that for the moment. Leave it exact. On to stage two. So Q is now, Q is moving up. 
still. But in free fall, I know that might seem a bit confusing, it's not actually falling, but it's, you know, it's only experiencing gravity. So we've got Q here, and the only force on it, because there's no, there's a string here, but it's like, it's actually now, um, it's like loose. So we just got 6G. And when you apply F equals MA, if you do this, you'll find that A is actually equal to G. So it's now accelerating downwards. It's moving up, that's motion going up, but accelerating downwards. So let's apply um, SUVAT again on Q. So now the initial velocity is this 4.9. Oh yeah, I'm applying SUVAT uh, up, I should say, because the motion is still up. V, okay, this is important. So we're interested, remember, in the instant when Q first comes momentarily to rest. So it's, it's going up. It, we're now in the second stage. It's going to carry on going up and then it's going to stop and then it's going to come back down. But we're only interested in the up to the point where it comes to rest. So V is going to be zero. And then A is going to be minus 9.8. And we're just interested in S. So we can again apply V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. This is why it's useful to not worry about finding all of um, u because I could just write, I could just square it now. So 0 is 4.9 minus 2, it's going to be 2 times minus 9.8, so that's minus 19.6s. So I can rearrange s is going to be 4.9 divided by 19.6. And they've chosen the numbers really carefully because we just get 0 0.25. So in stage one, it moved 1.75 meters. Stage two, it moved 0 0.25 meters. Therefore, overall, it's going to move two meters. All right, like that question. Very last part. Is just testing us on our understanding of the model. So it's actually in practice, then it, it wouldn't actually go that far. Why would it not go that far? Um, you need to state one factor. Now, I always go with this one, just air resistance. Air resistance would mean that actually the acceleration is not as much. It wouldn't actually go as far. And I think that's all that's expected. Um, just to say, in the answers, they get, you know, there are alternatives. You could talk about friction in the system on the pulley. Um, you could talk about the string. We assume it's light, but maybe it's not. It's got its own weight. It might not be. Um, it might be. Um, it might stretch, for example. And P and Q are not actually particles. They're going to have dimensions and so on. That can play a part as well. But I always just go with air resistance. Okay, good job on this question.